finish rendering out, let's go into After Effects and just open up our footage. So there's our iRoto and we can just ignore the alpha channel there. So let's just duplicate that up and we're going to desaturate this because this is going to create the uh, the black eye effect. So I'm just going to use my channel mixer. And I could use just hue and saturation to create this uh, this black and white, but I find the channel mixer gives me a, a much um a much nicer contrast in the image. So there we go, a bit more contrast there. There we go, and that will do. Don't need to to take too much pains on this. And now with my eye roto here, I'm going to use this shape so we just have a look at it. That's looking quite nice, floating around. Bit of uh, bit of motion blur there as well on the edge blur. So we're going to use this shape to cut out just the um, the black and white portion of the eye. So this is what a track mat is. It's using the properties of another clip to create the transparency on that layer. So I'm going to use the luma mat there. And that says that anything that's white is going to be uh, kept in the image. Anything that's black is going to be uh, completely transparent. And anything that's gray is going to be partly, partly transparent, partly opaque. And so what that's done there is just given us a very, very steady cut out of the eye there. It's looking quite nice. So I'm going to use the, uh, the levels command just to make that even crisper. In fact, I might change that to uh, to multiply there so I get a, a nicer idea of what's going on. So the reason I'm doing it this way rather than just creating a black solid is I actually want to keep some of these uh, some of these lights here. I want to keep that catch light there just so the eye looks a little bit more uh, a little bit more natural, a little bit more alive rather than just being a sort of big black splodge. So it actually helps to sell the sell the effect. Okay, and that's that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to have to find a way to transition this in, and I'm going to use uh, the radio radial wipe, uh, and I'm going to use Boris's radial wipes from the uh, Boris Continuum Complete section here, a uh, series of plugins. And the reason I'm going to do this is that it works just like a normal radial wipe, but it gives us um, a lot of other options here to create shapes or just add a bit of randomness to it. Um, now I could fill around with these a lot, or I could just use a preset that I've created earlier. And change my influence map to my eye. There we go. So that just fills in my eye quite, quite nicely. So let's, let's keyframe that up. So take that from 100% over here to fill the eye in. And let's just render that out. And that fills the eye quite nicely. Now, the only thing that I'm a bit worried about is that the center of the effect, where the, uh, where the ooze is coming from, isn't directly within the, the pupil of the eye itself. It's actually to, uh, to the side, and as the eye moves around, the center just stays in the same position because our center point hasn't got a keyframe on it. Now, I'm going to use the tracking data that we got from Mocha and apply that to our center point here. So if I could just come down into Mocha, go export tracking data, export the After Effects transform data, I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard because we're going to use it immediately. And I'm going to apply that to a null object. Now, a null object is basically just a helper layer. It won't show up in any renders at all. We just use it to control other layers or effects. So I'm just going to come to, uh, to the first frame here and paste all that information in. And we can see that it's pasted in all of the keyframes that our Mocha tracker gave us. There we go. So now I'm going to link the center point of my effect to the position of the null object. And I do that using a, an expression. So After Effects lets us use an expression to uh, to link values together. So I'm just going to alt click or option click on the Mac on uh, on the stopwatch there and just use the pick whip down here to just come up and choose the position there. I don't have to to type anything at all. So what this is doing now is it's saying that it's using the null object's position values as the center point for our for our layer there. 
you see it's coming in a little bit off center here so that's not a problem for us all i'm going to do is make sure that all of the the position keyframes are selected and then i can just adjust that quickly and all the other ones will uh, will adjust in relation to it so that should give us the effect we desire and it does there we go the final thing i'm going to do is just use a uh, an adjustment layer just to, to put up an overall color correction over the top just to help tie all the things in together i'm just going to use one of the film wash presets eastman version 2 there we go and there we go and that will just help to tie all the elements together So what we've done is created a rotoscope track mat using no keyframes, just the data we got from, from Mockers playing a tracker. And we also used the same data from that tracker to drive an effect over in After Effects using a null object. So I hope that's been useful for you and thanks for watching.